We arrive at the Sweet 16 in the NCAA Men's Soccer Championships. Tonight, the Kentucky Wildcats, the number nine seed at historic Riggs Field to take on the number eight seed, Clemson Tigers. Here's how we have arrived at this point. The Tigers on the bottom advancing with a win against Denver last weekend. Kentucky protecting its home field with a 2-0 victory on Santa Clara. A little bit later on this evening, a number one seed Oregon State against a number 16 New Hampshire team that upset North Carolina in the previous round. And hi, friends, and welcome in with Kevin Kennedy, Pete Kennedy with you. Well, things are always tight in postseason play. Virtually every kick might mean something. We expect that kind of match here this evening. Yeah, look at the defensive records of both of these teams. This game just feels like it could be 1-0, moment of individual brilliance, or possibly a set piece. And speak to that point of the two goalkeepers this evening. St. John's transfer Jan Hoffelner has had quite a season for the Kentucky Wildcats. Best in the nation in terms of goals against. Yeah, Pete, we're talking about a Kentucky team that's only conceded nine goals on the year. Very good defensively. George Marks recently received ACC honors for the Clemson Tigers. He, too, is having another fine season. Yeah, and George, for me, the shot stopping, communication, all that is brilliant, but also very good with his distribution. It'll be the second all-time meeting for the Wildcats and the Tigers. When they first got together, it was in the 2001 NCAAs. The Tigers won 1-0 in overtime in that match. We come back and start it out after this. The Kentucky Wildcats, they use a somewhat unique 4-4-2 in addition to their fine goalkeeper, among others, who were important players for them, would be down near the bottom. Itor Bjorgelsen, he is a player that's really come along, native of Norway, and they spread their scoring around, does Kentucky. So not necessarily one guy, but of late, Bjorgelsen has been really good for them. Yes, absolutely. And for the Clemson Tigers, of course, a Tiger team using their 4-3-3. They come in seeking a 15th win on on the season. Leading goal scorer on the year has been Isaiah Reed, the junior out of Rock Hill. And he is someone the Tigers will obviously try to feed this evening. Kentucky guided by a native of Denmark, Johan Sedergren. And he says people say Sedergren here in the States, but he has done a nice job, a former Dartmouth assistant, where he actually went against Mike Noonan when the Clemson coach was the head coach at Brown. Well, Sedergren has done a really nice job with the Kentucky program, seeking a 118th win tonight in better than a decade of work. And Mike Noonan, of course, Clemson fans now familiar with a coach who has guided this team for a dozen seasons and done such great things and the Tigers in a 34th NCAA tourney and of course uh, he has been on hand for several of those trips. Oh Pete, late November NCAA tournament soccer doesn't get much better than this. Mike Noonan visiting with him on Saturday just ecstatic at this time of the year and and as you can say the same for Johan Sedergren as well to be in the Sweet 16. Of course, the Tigers have made many trips to the Elite Eight. Kentucky trying to get to an Elite Eight for the second time and hoping that on the road they've got the ability to overtake Oscar Ogren and the Clemson Tigers. There's a guy who knows this facility well, Mason Visconti. We'll talk more about him in a moment. The defender for Kentucky underway here at Historic Riggs Field. And we expect to see a very aggressive Kentucky team. Tigers will try to counter that aggression. Pepe Fernandez getting it ahead. It'll be a sprint. What a nice job sliding it back to his goalkeeper by Luis Grasso. Dead balls just a little bit heavy for Isaiah Reed to get onto the end of, but not a bad idea by Fernandez Salvador. Tigers coming in having played really well offensively once again this year. Historically good a couple of seasons ago, as you'll remember. The Tiger team on the season. 45 goals so far. And here tonight playing in their 20th match. Great atmosphere here at Historic Riggs Field. The students coming back from Thanksgiving break and really providing some great energy for an NCAA tourney match. Hey, 
Clemson will take their time. So good on their restarts. Tigers looking to set against what has been the best goalkeeper in the nation this season. Like Callum Johnson trying to cross for the pass. Leads to a corner kick. Take another look. This is what Clemson likes to do. They like to get their outside backs forward involved in the attack. See Justin Malou getting forward there. Callum Johnson earning the corner. Enzo Maurice closed in a hurry for Kentucky. And it goes out once again. Kentucky Wildcats, one of just two schools in the SEC that plays soccer, South Carolina the other. So those two schools actually belong to Conference USA, although with the current tumult of the conference landscape, for the Wildcats at least, that could be changing sooner than later. They're weighing some different options. But for now, they're locked in on postseason play. And after coming through and winning a Conference USA championship. Their coach thinks they can make a deep run. Nice job stepping up by Hoffelner. Well, as you know, Pete, that Conference USA is home to the defending national champion, Marshall, and a number of very good programs. We saw Florida International here earlier in the year, familiar with UNC Charlotte. Hoffelner kicking it away. That's a miscue by Diop there. And Diop unable to convert for Clemson. Johnson for the Tigers. Kentucky tends to attack to the box and really toward the middle. That's at least what Mike Noonan was telling me Saturday, Kevin. Well, with that 4-4-2 formation, Pete, they're going to play with two central forwards. One of those looking for, for Itor by our goal sends more of a target player. He can pin the ball up, get other players involved. Here's a good look here. Have players coming underneath him. Just saw Bergolfsson. Out in front, they'll feed it. That was Meinzer. Lefty shot attempt. They were trying to set up Maurice in front of the net, but the entry pass a little bit too wide. see screen here just shaping that ball inside looking to get a little misdirection it's a little heavy on the pass Robert screen back in the Carolinas the player just attempted that pass from Raleigh at a Wakefield high marks runs up for the Tigers Up. Screen. Strong kick ahead. Maurice was chasing it, but well beyond. George March, seven shutouts this season. Probably comes in here feeling like he'll need to get an eighth if the Tigers are to advance based on how. Good Kentucky is defensively. Just nine goals allowed, as we've noted, by the Wildcats this year. The Tigers, some early action. Looked like it was Reed on the attack. Yeah, Luca Rodriguez was just able to snuff that out. Yeah, both of these goalkeepers, very good. George Marks, second team all conference in the ACC, and then. Hoffner was goalkeeper of the year in Conference USA. Fed toward Maurice. Amadi Diop got in the way of it. Yeah, Peter really thought the offsides flag was going to come up in that situation. Look at the hair offsides. There's the former Tiger, Mason Visconti. Shot Maurice, but a good recovery by the Wildcats to continue. Maurice 
right foot to the center. He's able to work away. Yeah, really nice by Alvaro Gomez. That time the feed ahead to Fernandez Salvador, but unable to execute. You can see it's a good yard offside there, just beyond. Just getting a little word for kicking the ball away at the last minute. Kentucky's third Sweet 16 trip in the past four seasons. Good footwork by Enzo Maurice. Visconti. Bjorgolfsson centered. Bjorgolfsson feeding back to his teammate. The shot is wide. Pretty good opportunity there for the Wildcats, but Bailey Rouse unable to convert. Yeah, it looked like that took a slight deflection. I think Marks was fortunate that it did. That looked like it was destined to go on frame. That's a good run out of midfield from Bailey Rouse there. Out of Littleton, Colorado, but it leads to a corner kick for the Wildcats. Diop, among others, positioning in front of his goalkeeper. Strong kick. And the Tigers able to come through with a stop. Clemson going 5-3-0 and in the ACC this season. Take another look at the corner kick. They just shape it into the back post. A lot of chaos in there for the goalkeeper to deal with. Wildcats were as good as they are defensively. 36 goals scored this year. Tigers on the season, 45 goals scored. Oh, the roll is so good. Able to hold that ball up with Hamidi Diop on his back. Recovery, boy. Pepe Fernandez getting spun. And that was a painful moment for the Tiger senior from Ecuador. Yeah, it looked like perhaps just a dead leg there right in the... That's exactly what it was. Visconti, who was here back in 2018. So you would suppose they know each other. We noted the goals scored, and you see these teams on the top 13 in goal differential. And we say that because the slightest tally on some nice footwork. But it'll be given away. Centering pass. Well, we talked about those individual moments of brilliance, and for me, Pete, that's one of the players that is capable of conjuring something up is who's Monsilla. So dangerous in and around the area. Diop. Monsilla. You get a glimpse there of his creativity and his vision. But you look at the goal, the fact that each team has been very good in terms of goal differential now related to tonight, and just being one better is probably going to decide things. Well, I think that speaks volumes to, to Kentucky's record as well. They've only tasted defeat once this year. A number of draws, I think four draws on the year, which tells me they are very tough to beat. And it shows you just how close an eighth and a ninth seed are in terms of very key category. It's competitive, a sweet 16 match, as you will find at least going in. Well, we talked to Johan yesterday. 
before training, Pete, we, we referenced the fact that this is an eighth seed and a ninth seed, and uh, we would expect a, the game to reflect that. Yes. But it's the tournament, anything can happen. And you have New Hampshire flying across the country to play at Oregon State, a one seed tonight. That'll be uh, another great game to catch. Our match should be just about wrapped up by the time that one begins, so the Tigers will be able to follow that in real time if they're able to win, or Kentucky for that matter. Whoever wins this match will be able to watch in real time. Alan Johnson. Here's the activity that time for Clemson. Corner there, last yeah. touch from Charlie Asensio. Asensio simply would be the first to tell you he whipped on the attempt to knock the ball down. And we'll see what Kentucky does here. Then everyone will have a number of different set pieces. On the first one, they converged on the goalkeeper and came off the line in swinging service. Wildcats 105 corner kicks on the season coming in. Their previous 20 matches. This is their second of the evening. Rodriguez initially for the Wildcats. Visconti, the crossing pass. Silla. And the infraction on the Wildcats, Nick Gutmann. Yes, he lost so much to deal with there. Gutmann did his job, though, to lay the counterattack. Sprinting over and delivering the kick, Hoffelner. And the whistle, I, I think everyone in the building, other than Bailey Rouse, recognized that we were going to get the whistle. You can see Luke Andrews here coming just a little bit from behind. Shoulder to shoulder is fine, Pete, but that shoulder goes into the just slightly the shoulder blade there. Easy call. Shot attempt. Oh my. And a goal. Is that the grad transfer, Callum Johnson? Callum Johnson, third goal of the season. Couldn't tell Pete. Looked like that took a slight deflection. Maybe threw off Hoffner to the, the last second. Just the seventh goal allowed this season in his 18th match for Jan Hoffner. Nicely done from Sela there to find him. Oh, I think it did take a deflection. Ironically, looks like it came off of the foot of Visconti there. Callum Johnson and his career at Boston College out of New York City. What a huge moment for him to get the third goal of the year. And you see the atmosphere intensifying in orange here at historic Riggsfield. And Pete watching this Clemson team this year. They, these are the moments when I think they can sometimes be at their best. They feed off of the energy of this home crowd. That fuels them on, gives them a little edge. If they spill, smell blood in the water, you could reference that late regular season game with Louisville that just got out of hand. As we note, any any moment in these games, and, and you could probably say about any game, but it just seems as if every time a foot touches a ball, especially obviously near the box, it it could be an impactful moment. That might be the difference when we're done after regulation play as to why the Tiger team advances. Yeah, what I think is also always interesting too, Pete, is this ryegrass is starting to take root. 
They throw down on top of the Bermuda here in late November. It has a tendency to get very slick with some condensation. So you also just a, a missed tackle, a slip and fall right there in the area. Anything can happen. Tigers on the attack. Asensio getting it ahead. Silla. Oh, Clemson starting to have a little bit of success finding their holding midfielders and building out of the back. It's always dangerous when you play with a 4-4-2. You have two midfielders matched up with, with that midfield triangle. Justin Malou actually touched the ball on the previous play. A yeah, little handsy from Agron there. Well, as big of a body as B.R. Golson is. Dealing with Luke Andrews is no small feat either. Their two forwards, Jurgelson, 6'2", 195, as coach describes him as a handful. And the other 5'10", 175, Luke Andrews. It was he who committed the foul just before the first goal of the match by Callum Johnson. Malou. Mike Noonan, one of the many recruits he's gotten from the nation of Senegal, getting ready for the throw in. Mike Noonan, ninth NCAA trip during his tenure with the Tigers. Nicely defended from Luis Grosso there. Kentucky center back. Oof. That's a good idea from Fernandez Salvador just looking to play behind that Kentucky back line. Get the impression that Usman Silla had something in mind. Yeah, terrific tackle from Meinzer there. The last thing you want is for a player of Guzman Silas to break that midfield block and run at that back line. That's Rodriguez. Gets it across to his teammate, Luis Grasso. Danger. Hard contact that time. Play moves on. Isaiah Reed looked like he had a breakaway opportunity. Yeah, and I like the idea with the one-touch pass from Fernandez Salvador, but Hoffner so good at judging the ball and playing off of his line, able to snuff that out. Jorgelson got in the way of that. Marks able to line up that attempt by Enzo Maurice really didn't put a whole lot on it. Well, Pete, I have to say, I think the, the early goal is a, it's really opened up the game. It's, we have some end-to-end -end soccer before a little cagey feeling each other out. But uh, both teams are certainly getting forward. Wildcats take about 14 shots per game. Again, they score enough, but their brand is more about defense. Having allowed no more than one goal in their previous five matches and just in two of those matches. Double overtime win for their league championship against Florida Atlantic. They won two to one. Good discipline defensively there for Clemson. Move your feet, keep your eye on the ball. Don't lunge in for a tackle. Hoffelner, their goalkeeper, of his 12 shutouts, three have come in the past five matches for UK. Wildcats 2-0 against ACC teams on the season prior to tonight. Screen. 
knocked down nicely by Diop. Opportunity in front, strong Ooh. kick. And just a little bit wide. And that time, Luke Andrews out of San Jose, California, St. Mary's transfer. Now you can see he spun and he found himself free. Lovely turn there. Great first touch to free himself. And he didn't miss by much, Pete. Team leader coming in, 35 shots attempted on the year for Andrews. Visconti defended by Johnson. Hernandez. Good decision by the referee. There was the initial foul. Pipe rode the challenge. Mason Visconti, we told you, played for the Tigers a few seasons ago, and his coach at Kentucky, Johan Cedergren, really has enjoyed having him in his program. Yeah, he talked a lot about his growth as a player because when Visconti was on this Clemson roster, Pete, he was an attacking player. He's a wide player, and and now he's being deployed as a outside back, and a lot of those skills can translate to get forward. He says he's been pleased with his growth. They had recruited him out of high school in Kansas City. And when he decided to make a change, Wildcats are more than happy to reopen the relationship. Fernandez, nice feed. So up. And Reed, oh, what a nice job on the save by Hoffman. A really quick reaction. Yeah, Malou just picks him or out. Or Malou, there. rather. He picks him out at the near post. And just end-to-end -end action we've seen. Both forwards, very good turns to, to free themselves for a shot. Reed, a quick turn, and Hoffelner an equally quick reaction. Maurice just looking for Visconti to get forward there. Setting up to try to receive that pass. Wildcats do a nice job in the back. with the header. And firing through Visconti. And this communication. Fernandez. And right in front of the student section <laughs> for the added added uh, energy. Well, Pete, we talked about the crowd when we opened the broadcast, but I think they're still continuing to file in here. Visconti getting ready to throw it in. Like we could be getting our first batch of subs here from from this deep Kentucky team here. Screen defended by Johnson. Marcel Meinzer. Visconti. Deflected nicely. Substitutions for Kentucky. Entering the match, number 15, Brock Lindell. Mason Visconti. Number 7, Daniel Evans. Leaving the match, number 9. See the substitutions. 
As they pretty much flip out Brock Lindau and Daniel Evans, they really do try to rotate them in and give them a pretty good amount of playing time for Aitor Bjorgelsen and Luke Andrews. Oh, this is a, a player in Daniel Evans coming up off the bench who is third team all conference USA this year with five goals on the year. Yeah. Among their team leaders with five goals, Bjorgelsen and Andrews have also scored five this year. Well, that was one thing that, that Johan spoke of yesterday when we met with him. Pete, he talked, really felt like the depth of this team was a strength for him this year. Charlie Asensio looking to throw it in for Clemson. Postseason mindset, Kevin, when you've got the early lead. Obviously, you need to stay with where you are in the game, but there has to become a, a thought as you're out there of simply, I don't want to say playing defensively, but but trying to make sure, though, that nothing stupid happens on the defensive end, if that, if that makes any sense. It does. You do not want to get into a defensive mindset too early. Still a lot of soccer to play, you know, 65 minutes or so left in this game you want to you want to still hunt for the second goal but you don't necessarily want to commit so many players for that you risk giving something up on the counter strong kick ahead by Diop look how far out the goalkeeper Hoffelner is but obviously a very fluid game Mike Noonan says that had George Marks decided to move on they were eyeing Hoffelner as he was looking to transfer from St. John's and he well could have ended up at Clemson. Well, this is a St. John's team we saw here earlier in the year. Luca Gavern, one of the better goalkeepers in the country. St. John's a little bit of embarrassment of riches at the goalkeeper position. And this is the risky run when you defend so much, Pete. Not only is it uh, mentally exhausting, it's physically exhausting. Clemson really needs to get a good spell of possession here. They can open up, get expansive, get a little rest. Having subbed out two forwards for their, their two backups, do you sense that Johan Sedergren may be looking to uh, adjust off of his 4-4-2 at all and some of what they do with that? Now they will continue to press the two Clemson center backs. A lot of, a lot of horizontal movement, try to confuse them, but also fresh legs to, to press and, and give you some runs in behind. I think that's a good substitution for Kentucky. Substitution for the Tigers. Tigers striking at the 13:43 mark of this opening half of play. Usman Silla. Oscar Agrin, and after the foul, those two able to set up Callum Johnson. Yeah, Callum Johnson just first touch prepar preparation there, second touch quality finish. Giving the Tigers the one nothing advantage. Johnson coming down from another ACC school, Boston College. Finished out his career at Clemson. Sub with it. Coach Noonan made there. Strobeck coming in for Isaiah Reed as a, another tactical adjustment there. Strobeck is much more of a back to goal type forward. Whereas Isaiah Reed is a player you want to play in behind. Clemson hasn't had a lot of success playing in behind that back line. And the foul against the Tigers. On the offside. Bay just offside there. The positioning by the assistant referee. So the infraction against Clemson. Kentucky. Some early activity in front of the net attacking George Marks, but for the most part, Tigers have been able to deny all that many attempts by the Wildcats as our first half has forged on. Danger now. Crossing uh, pass, but there to step in front of it was Maurice. Yeah, just the wrong decision from Callum Johnson there. Schrobeck was making a nice diagonal run in behind. Thank <laughs> you. 
Rodriguez. And get back to Grasso. Now Meinzer. Suddenly the Wildcats a bit methodical. Visconti. He's become a target of the student section. One of their former fellow Clemson students. And Marks is right there. I'm sure they're just welcoming him back to Riggs, Pete. It's a holiday weekend. Why shouldn't there be good cheer? Opportunity at that time. Evans would love to have it back. Nice shot on goal this season for the Colony Texas native. Yeah, and you can see Oscar Agron is not happy with his back line there. Take it from the turnover. Yamalu's touch was just heavy there. And was that Diop? He pretty much just flicked out of the way. Just, he, he stabbed for it, lunged for it. I'll tell you, Daniel Evans didn't miss by much there. Mark's kick. Off the attempted header by Fernandez Sencio. And it'll go out. You saw the official on the sideline wearing what looks to be a similar Jersey to Kentucky as Callum Johnson, who scored the lone goal, will get a breather. They, the officials on the field had to change into the yellow jerseys you've seen them wearing because that gentleman there, the others were wearing a similar blazer, and it would blend in too much with Kentucky. They determined before the game, so you see they've gone to just the yellow. Yeah, I think they had on their blue kits before. Yeah. So it, they had to do a quick change just before the match. That's a lovely first touch from Evans there. Yeah, it really was a nice giveaway to his teammate. Yeah, these Kentucky subs have given them a, a bit of energy. Casper grinning there. Hitting the deck was Rouse. Evans gave it away, looked to get it back. Sprint after it. You could see Diop was caught out again there, just stretched a little too far. Wow. That was noticed, and out it goes. Quinn McNeil for the Tigers, looking to be a nuisance to Daniel Evans of Kentucky, but let's see. The referee has issued a caution to Clemson's number five, Hamadi Diop. So Hamadi Diop issued the caution. He's gone back to you. He allowed advantage to play on back there. Gone back, issued a card. Show you what led to that yellow card just moments ago. Yeah, he just lunged in, got caught stabbing in. Good decision by the referee to allow the game to play on. And on the Kentucky shot attempt by Evans, it looked like there was contact on Diop, and that might have been a little bit of revenge. Yeah. I think we're going to get a warning here for kicking the ball away. Our officiating crew, the referee Matthew Thompson. Robert Dale and Justin Howard rounding out those. And you 
you see our officials with the fourth being Raymond Thomas. Clemson holding well out of the outside of their area here. It's a good initial win by Oscar Agron. Return fire by Evans, too strong, and obviously nowhere near the look he had just earlier when he kicked it wide to the right. Mike Newton among the top ten winning his coaches. And he has seen his teams have to defend that kind of attack many times over the years. Elton Shifamba. And you see Alvaro Gomez getting a breather. There is allowing play on. Oh my. Wow. That's certainly a foul there, but and that looks like that could have been a handball, didn't it? Initially. And then the Kentucky player who was steamrolled is Luis Grasso. And Grasso possibly Clemson was looking for a handball. He was just inside his own area. Nonetheless, kind of a kind of a silly foul to commit there. Strobeck getting no word with the official and pretty aggressive play by the native of Sweden Strobeck. Yeah, it just kind of clatters into the back of Grosso. Grosso from Germany, one of the many European players on this Kentucky team. So things have gotten certainly more physical. What a nice job off the chest than the header. And Marks able to get out there just in time. Evans looked like he had set his teammate up in great shape. That really nice run in behind there from Grinning. But as we said, look at the little touch here to put him in behind. Rock Lindau just a little bit off timing. And now another Tiger hitting the deck. I tell you, Pete, this uh, this game has taken a turn to the physical here the last Man, five minutes. May need to put some pads on. And remember, Marcel Meinzer saw his teammate Luis Grasso get run over moments ago, and Meinzer was near the action that time, and now it's Grasso getting a word or two from the official. We've seen the one. Card for Hamidi Diop. Number eight for Kentucky is Meinzer. Yeah, that's that foul is uh, nearly identical to to Diop's, but as you referenced, I think it was uh, perhaps the the second foul for Diop. That's what put him in the book. It's really Grassell's first involvement. Love to play with some pace of their own this evening. And last touch by a screen of Kentucky to go out of bounds. Yeah, unfortunately, he looked clear. Just ricocheted right off of his own leg. Strong, Usman Silla unable to catch up with it, or rather, Justin Malou. That's a good idea from Trafamba to change the point of attack. Ball just skipped on the grass. So the momentum of this game has swung back and forth, Pete. You, you felt like Kentucky had really had a good handle on the game, and all of a sudden, Clemson's come to life here. The box opportunity, but Tigers were unable to get the setting pass and Casper Brenning, a young player freshman from Denmark, has really come along this Kentucky program. Able to recover just in time before anything could be set up for Fernandez. Corner kick though for the Tigers. Each team with two corner attempts so far. Bar. And 
one save. Wow. Was that Oscar Agron on the initial header? Offner just got his hand up, put it off the crossbar. Agron for the Tigers scored the winner against Denver. Talking before the match, Kevin, you are of the impression he could be a very impactful player in this match this evening. Yeah, yeah for me, watching this Clemson team, he just he, he organizes the back line, and he's just such a, a forceful character for Mike Noonan's team here. Agron, and he'll get it back to his goalkeeper. Always so composed on the ball, and... Coming up on six minutes to go in the opening half. Tiger scored just under 14 minutes in on Callum Johnson's goal. Clemson team that over its past five matches has only allowed two goals. One each to Louisville and North Carolina. A nice recovery in the back for Kentucky. And yeah, Fernando Salvador looking to go forward. Look at frustration. Pass a little bit too strong. Well, Kentucky the foul. So let's see if indeed Agron was the one with the initial header. Perhaps Quinn McNeil had hit it. Might have been Quinn McNeil. Here's. I actually hit it off the crossbar. I thought. Yep. I initially thought Hoffner got a hand to it. I think it caught all bar and his hand was right below, but. He did react well. Well, and Quinn McNeil for me is a, a player that's really come into his own this last year. Four goals on the year, four assists. He's had a couple of game winners. Third team all ACC. Well, you can see what a handful of Scylla is back there for Clemson. If I'm Coach Noonan, I'm trying to get the ball on his foot in and around the area all night long. And is. And it'll go the other way on the offside. A little bit too strong for Hernandez. Hoffelner getting ready to run into another goal kick. And once again, it'll go back to the goalkeeper for the Wildcats near midfield. Agron, a hang time on that. Getting back to his teammate. Tigers looking to reset. Diop. I'm not sure that was necessarily the plan. Yeah, I think he was trying to link up with Brandon Parrish. Still, Brandon Parrish was on the move. Nonetheless, the pass was too heavy. Taking more shots than the Tigers so far. Five to three. But Clemson made the one that counts. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's a natural in a game like this, Pete. The one team's got the early goal. Climbing with a chance for a header. The Wildcats 
bench. One of the foul call. Beautiful set. I think he was setting up Daniel Evans. And you see that is one angry head coach, Johan Cedergren. He's looking for something there. Looked like there was contact, but I don't think that was a foul. I don't think it, that warrants a, a penalty in that situation. We'll have another look. No, actually, it might have been Lindau they were trying to feed with the pass. Yeah, I think actually. Or, no. Maybe Rouse. Yeah, Rouse was the intended target and simply a matter of getting positioning. Let's take another look at what happened in the box. You can see the back post run looks like Asensio. Looks like the foul was actually on Asensio. Good decision by the referee. There's no penalty there. Bailey Rouse is trying to score. Here's Clay Holstad for the Wildcats. Thought it was interesting their head coach Jan Cedergren describing his team as like herding cats, and he didn't mean it as a pun. <laughs> their nickname being a Wildcat, but he just says at times this guy's just get a little bit out of control, and you know he's got to kind of rein them back in. And well, they've certainly brought the energy tonight, Pete. I think they've been very good. Thompson got the somewhat early goal. I think it's natural to see the uh, opposing team really throw a lot of bodies forward, take some chances. And Kentucky's been dangerous in those moments. Lucas Rodriguez and the Wildcats trying for a 16th win of the season. George Marks, good so far for the Tigers. And he's just going to run the clock down here and just pump this one forward. Clemson win the initial header, call it a half. Final 10 seconds before the intermission. I'm actually shocked that that's got to be a book in the neck. And now well, so they should have gotten the first one there. There we go. Shoulder in the guy's back. And that's simply frustration. Huh. A lot of frustration as Brandon Parrish of the Tigers pops to his feet. Clock frozen, one second remaining. Take another look. This is a foul here. That's the first one coming through Strobeck's back. Ball gets squirted free. It's just rolled over there. Yeah. Takes up Brennan Parrish. Looks like Grasso was maybe going for the tackle, but just a little bit too aggressive. So here is an opportunity for Hamidi Diop. Four seconds on the clock here. Clock will start when Diop makes contact on this set piece. Diop, one of the Tigers from Senegal, but came through the academy in Florida that so many Tigers from overseas do. Monte Montverde. Kicked away. And that's how the half will come to an end. Indeed, a physical opening half of play between the Clemson Tigers and Kentucky Wildcats. Second ever meeting. Both have come in NCAA tourney play. And under Mike Noonan, in his more than a decade at the helm, the Tigers with 118 wins in 133 matches when scoring first. And here they are at the half. Callum Johnson's goal providing the difference so far. Round of 16 in the NCAA Men's Soccer Championship. And at the break, 1-0 Clemson on UK. 1-0 Tigers here at halftime at Historic Riggs Field. A crisp late November night. Tigers trying to get back to the Elite Eight and add to the lore in that regard and program history with Kevin Kennedy, Pete Kennedy with you. Physical first half, we've talked about that. What do you think some of the discussions were in the Kentucky locker room at the break and the Clemson locker room? Well, I think Kentucky tried to get Bjor Golson a little bit more involved, keep him in the game. They were having a lot of success when he was able to pin the ball and have players play off of him. Clemson on the other side, you don't have to get a second goal if you remain steadfast defensively, but if you can get forward and nick one, go for it. 
You know, just 10 goals now allowed by Kentucky this year and only about a half dozen by their starting goalkeeper. Let's show you some of the examples of the physical play we noticed in the opening half. Yeah, this is Diop here just late on the challenge there. It's really a second foul, so I think that was simply accumulation. Also getting hit there. And, and that time the yellow card applied to Louis Grasso, the defenseman for the Kentucky team. Yeah, just a foul on Parrish there. He was late on the challenge as well. And so the Tigers, they strike after a foul on Kentucky, but that was early in the match, less than 15 minutes in, off the restart. Well, Clemson getting a great opportunity for Callum Johnson. Yeah, and that's the moment where Usman Silla is able to get free and run at that back four. He draws a lot of attention, feeds Johnson wide. Johnson's fortunate gets a deflection on the finish. A case there where you're so focused on the likes of Silla and Reed that someone like Johnson has to be ready to strike, and he did for another goal in the season. Yeah, and then we have Quinn McNeil getting up and heading one off the crossbar. Callum Johnson able to come through with his third goal of the year. George Marks so far, five shots against him. And the Clemson goalkeeper has seen uh, several of those sail wide, but good work in a match that he's going up against a really fine goalkeeper on the other side. And, well, Marks right up there among wins among Clemson goalkeepers all time. Yeah, just continuing to climb into those record books there. Losing a third on the all-time wins list. Meanwhile, on the other end, Jan Hoffelner, the goalkeeper for Kentucky, in his first season with the Wildcats after transferring from St. John's, hopes to have a clean second half of action, keep things where they are, and hope that his team can find a way to score enough to get the Wildcats on to what would be just a second appearance in the Elite Eight all time. We noted he's not been scored on much this year, coming in had allowed just six goals in 17 matches. And it's so tough, and I, and I think he had that shot covered, but it took a deflection. Looked like off of Visconti's foot there and just kind of threw him off. So tough to deal with for goalkeeper. As Clemson students providing some great atmosphere in the match this evening, and no doubt we'll be hearing from them in the background as the second half is underway. Tigers hoping to move on. If the bracket holds, then they've got themselves a long road trip, but they're able to hang on to this one nothing lead and get the victory because Oregon State would obviously, as a number one seed, have the home field for the next round if they can knock off New Hampshire. But the Wildcats from UNH pull off another big upset. The Tigers win. There'll be action here next weekend at Historic Greeks Field in the Elite Eight. Wind a little bit to the favor of the Wildcats in the second half. Not sure if those are borrowed from the Tiger Band or if they're simply brought from home, those drums I'm referring to, but they do provide some atmosphere. Yeah, that's a, that is the property of Central Spirit, the supporters group for the men's and women's program here. and. Long time group that's really done a nice job providing atmospheric games and a lot of pep for Tiger teams. Screen challenge by Fernandez. Fernandez, a little bit of frustration. Once again, contact. And now play continues. Sprinting after Bjorgelsen. Looked a little hairy for a second, as far as the Tigers are concerned. Oof. Stepping in front of it. Job to get the opportunity. Gutmann centering the pass, but there was Agren and Agren stepping up. And that's one of the things he does so well, Pete. Just anticipated that entry pass, able to step in front of the Kentucky player and 
nick that out. Fernandez. Trying to flip it ahead to Reed. Hoffelner near midfield. Nice center. And a set by Andrews, a shot and denied by Marks. Nicely taken by Maurice there. Good position from George Mars. Look at Andrews just release Maurice. Marks getting up there. Yeah, not trying to hold that, just putting his hands up, taking the sting out of it. Marsh came in with 59 saves on the season. Jorgelson. Strong attempt. All right, Gutmann, Tigers able again to deny. And this is where you want to break that midfield block if you're close, and that's going to be off, though. Looked like an opportunity for Reed to work with the ball, but it'll go back the other way. Yeah, Reed just a hair offside there. Yep. Doing a nice job with my tour of Jorgelson right here. I think the center official has decided he's going to let the boys play a little bit tonight. Petey has certainly not seemed to call it any tighter in this second half. This is the NCAA tournament after all. Diop hitting the deck. And the late whistle, Bjorgelson. Foul against the Wildcats. Across the way on that Kentucky sideline, you may be able to notice it. Gentleman standing right in the middle is the head coach, Johan Cedergrim. But a lot of frustration over the final 20 minutes or so of the opening half expressed by him and his assistant coaches and some of their players around him. Well, I think some of that may have stemmed from that incident that they, they were appealing for a penalty. It didn't didn't appear to be a foul. I think the referee made the right decision there. Looked like actually Asensio was the one that was fouled, but they, uh, they were hot for a couple of minutes over that. And unable to run it down. Asensio. Asensio. Asensio just played that behind him a little bit, changing the point of attack, but it was a bit heavy with his pass. getting it ahead and we'll go back to March for the Tigers. The Tigers trying for a 57th all time win in the NCAA tournament. Oh that's a good ball in from Asensio. Nice job for Kentucky to break pressure there. Screen, oh, he whiffed. Fernandez and screen. And play will continue. Now Robert Screen made amends there, didn't he? Yeah, in a hurry. Now they say hustle makes up for many mistake. So fair play to screen. Screen. Had a, had a good year, second team all conference. Yep. Raleigh, North Carolina native, played at Wakefield High. Tigers on the attack again. Maybe a little too strong, though, on the feed ahead toward Reed. Let's see how quickly he made amends, did screen. 
just whiffed on the pass attempt. Yeah, came in and pressure Fernando Salvador. And you almost had to hear a whistle there. As Meinzer hit the deck, but he's the one showing some frustration. Nine fouls against Kentucky. Let's take a look at what just happened. Yeah, I'm not sure what he's uh, appealing for there. I mean, it's certainly a foul, but a, I wouldn't say it's a yellow card offense. It's not accumulation. Diop with a nice job in the box. Jorgelson, and back out it goes to Grasso. Toward the goal, and Marks right there. Yeah, courageously came and got that. Looked like Luke Andrews was the Kentucky player pressing there. Andrews was closing in a hurry and was able to get inside on Diop. Actually, I think that was Gutman, but uh, nonetheless, good save from George Marks. Grasso kicking it ahead. Sensio. Mendez. That's a good ball. Visconti on the counter. Mason Visconti, the former Tiger. Now a Kentucky Wildcat. Gutman. Screen. Meinzer knocked away. Very aggressive play. Tim Strobuck coming on in the opening half in the later stages and impacting things. Andrews. Maurice now out high and they'll reset. That time. Lines are unable to control. Jorgelson, though, gets it to his teammate. Andrews will now try to run it down. Looks like Maurice initially had a chance on the feed from Borgelson, and you'll see as we pan to the right, a Kentucky player is down, and I believe I think that's Meinzer, that's isn't it? Marcel Meinzer, the senior out of Germany and one of their team captains. Yeah, that's not good. Peter appears to be holding his knee. He is a vital part of what they do. Callum Johnson having a conversation with Isaiah Reed. And getting together right there with Fernandez, but it appears that he simply then twisted the knee. It didn't seem like it was any contact that caused yeah, perhaps it. Perhaps overextended it there. His, his last touch was a little heavy. He's lunging for it to have a toe poke on it. And he will have to come off the field there, Pete, with as a athletic trainer came on for treatment. We'll see if he'll make a return or not. So Usman Silla and the Clemson Tigers hoping Maintain this one nothing lead as able to walk off under his own strength, but quite gingerly as Marcel Meinzer. And that would be an important player for Kentucky not to have available for the remainder of this match. It looks like Clay Holstead will come in, and, and I think that's a big loss when you play with a 4 4 2, and that's one of your central <laughs> midfield players. He's brought a lot of personality to the game. Certainly hope we see him again on the field tonight. Boy, mines are though, you can tell he's in a lot of pain. Sometimes, Pete, this cold weather too affects that as well. 
Holstad out of Birmingham went to Oak Mountain High School. We saw him during the opening half. And now let's see what that could be about. Play stop momentarily. George Marks, Tigers have denied Kentucky any points so far, despite the fact the Wildcats have outshot the Tigers seven to three. As we're under 35 minutes remaining in regulation. Johnson and able to handle well, the pass. Good ball in from and stepping up to Salvador. Hoffelner. Hoffelner has been quick to come off his line tonight. A really good job of anticipating the through ball there. Hoffelner trying to be part of what would be a second all time elite eight team for the Wildcats. Bouncing away as it was chased down by. Andrews initially. Fernandez. And a nice move by Silla. Boy, there's that footwork, Kevin, you referred to earlier. Now he's just so creative. Yes, and he's so dangerous as he's running at that last defender. Sensio, but in the wrong direction. He demands a lot of attention. They are Golson so strong on the ball there, Pete. Wow, that time flying in and doing a nice job to keep it in play. Gutmann. Now, Pierre Golson getting it back to screen. There's Rodriguez being dogged by Johnson. And Diop seems to think it should be the Tigers' ball. Or I should say. Like Malou that time. Yeah, his Clemson uh, numbers are uh, a little tough to. Yeah, they, to they didn't from put him on the back of the jerseys. Uh, and then very lovely when you get the front view, but uh, a little bit different when the players don't wear numbers. So, Usman Silla, for younger viewers, I mean, you just don't go out on the soccer field and do that. You've got to think that that's hours of work just on the side to get. Yeah, just so clever. Technically, he has ideas. He just really difficult to, to take the ball off of him when he's on the dribble. Another one of the Tigers from Senegal by way of Montverde Academy in Florida. Strong kick marks. Wind currently not a factor. And a straight kick away by Hoffelner. Strong chase after it for Kentucky Holstad. Battles with Asensio. And Silla unable to save it. and really battle it. We noted his coach calls him a handful. He's just so physical at 6'2", 195. And yeah, Charlie Asensio doesn't even have his boot back on and play is restarted. Wow. But you see the aggressive play that time and Asensio never really a chance. I mean, just bodying right up on him was Bjorgelson. Yeah, so strong physically. Mars going to take his time there and draw Bjorg Olsen to him. Diop. That's going to be heavy from Asensio. Not a bad idea to release Quinn McNeil. You can see just the one touch here. Just the weight of the pass was too heavy. 
for McNeil to get on the end of. Near midfield, Maurice back to Holstad. Andrews. You can see that it a midfield block for Clemson. The three midfielders just harassing the two center midfielders for Kentucky whenever they're on the ball. Silla. And the foul against Clemson. Not a bad idea at all. Andrews. Knocked away. Yeah, slightly turned Agron there. Agron was able to, to poke that out for a corner kick. Discipline defending. Don't commit a foul here. Oscar Agron, really quick step. But a corner kick upcoming for Kentucky. It'll be their fourth of the night. Substitution for the Wildcats from the corner. Strong battle for the ball. Cameron Wheeler just checked in for the Wildcats, but not able to keep it in his team's possession. Yeah, he gets the last touch there as Diop is just clearing that ball up the line. It's going to be a Clemson throw. place to throw it in. Oh, Meinzer. Well, that's good news for the Wildcats as Meinzer, you saw him hobble off earlier, very important midfielder for them. Off the throw in. Screen. And then the question, obviously, Pete, will, will he be the same version of the player that was uh, in the game before? As you said, he was walking gingerly to the sideline after that uh, stoppage. Kick centered. Good job denying any chance to get the ball for Reed by Grasso. Marks at Andrews closing again. And now we'll get another throw in for the Wildcats. Yeah, taking no chances there, just pumping that, uh, that ball away when he's under pressure. Andrews, first year transfer from St. Mary's of California. Originally from San Jose, so in a different part of the world from which he's accustomed, but a very mobile player. And he's, he's mobile, whereas Jorgelson is more of the physical presence. It's really given them a nice combination in their forward group. As you see, Bjorgelson that time was bumped. Kentucky was still numbers forward here on the second phase of this corner. Strong kick across. And Andrews. Meinzer getting back and 
able to get it back toward midfield. Diop for Clemson. And once again, bodies fly. Looked like Isaiah Reed actually pulled out of that challenge. And I believe Meisner is Meinzer, Marcel Meinzer, the player down again. You see him in the background for Kentucky. Looked like Reed thought he was going to be late. That was the slightest of touches, if anything. Might have gotten an inadvertent kick in the lower shin or ankle area of Meinzer. Just a slight touch on the outside of the ankle, which just looked like a continuation of play. You know, as crazy as you're right there, there's there's no connection except that thin that thin sock, Pete. So, hmm. on a cold night. Six fouls on Clemson, nine on Kentucky. But keep in mind, the Wildcats had an eight to two lead in that category at the half. So, Clemson's been the team with more infractions here so far in the second half. I'm not sure what the discussion is. I guess he's telling. And Isaiah Reed noticeably upset. Reed, the junior out of Rock Hill, played at South Point High. And I, and I don't know if this is a yellow card offense, in my opinion. You can see he, he's holding out of the challenge. And if he does make contact, it's the slightest of touches. So Reed with the yellow card joining Hamid Diop for the Tigers with the yellow card this evening. Screen the throw in. That's a handball. Hamid Diop that time. Hard contact with. High to Bjorgelson. And the center official is more concerned with having a conversation with Coach Noonan rather than the handball infraction there. So let's see what appeared to be an infraction and yep. Whether he meant to or not, Bjorgelson. Yeah, gains an advantage by the ball. Fell nicely for him because of that. Bjorgelson. Tigers obviously know to get close to him when he's got the ball. Acceleration. Visconti in the battle. And Mason Visconti hitting the deck. Staying for him stride for stride. See what kind of aggressive play by Quinn McNeil. I just shoulder to shoulder. Was able to hold Visconti off. Former teammates here at Clemson. Wildcats again sub in. Brandon Parrish for Clemson. We saw him in the opening half of action. You saw Brock Lindau come back on the field for Kentucky, one of their forwards. Not sure if they also brought Daniel Evans, their other forward, back in. But yes, they have. So Bjorgelson and Andrews getting a rest while Evans and Lindau are now on the pitch for the Wildcats. Sliding kick away by Hoffelman. And yeah, that's a good press by Callum Johnson there, putting the ball in Hoffenel's left foot. Visconti trying to run it down as Evans, he will. Evans to 
house. And you see bodies flying in the box. Another foul. System referee is immediately calling on the athletic trainer. He believes it was a head injury, indicating it was an elbow. Justin Malou and Oscar Ogren standing right next to their teammate Hamidi Diop on the hard contact. Yeah, it looked like Lindau just went right through him on the challenge when the ball was in a wide area. Attention from the athletic trainer. Tiger scored in the first 15 minutes of this match on Callum Johnson's third goal of the season, and that has stood to this point. And to his feet is Diop. He will go off for who knows how long. Ted Coach walking alongside of him as well. Diop actually going underneath Lindau. 11 fouls in the match now on the Wildcats. A six for the Tigers. And Diop very important to the back for the Tigers. We'll see. How long it is before he's able to return? It looks like it's going to be almost immediately. And Diop is on right away. So Justin Malou will slide to right back again. Wildcats trying to get something going. Casper grinding. Get it back now, Robert Screen. Screen angling it toward Rodriguez. Rodriguez, strong kick ahead, deflected off the body of Lindau. And it goes back to Marks. Yeah, Marks taking no chances. Sconti, strong move. Ooh, dribble around defenders. Centered by Evans. Screen. And ahead for his teammate, but a little bit too strong as he tried to get it to Wheeler. Substitution for the Tigers. Entering the match, number nine, Mohamed Say. Mohamed Say, I believe it's his first action of the evening. He's wearing that right knee brace, the junior out of Valencia, Spain. Basically playing with a torn ACL. And they're, as Mike Noonan will tell you, just hoping he can continue on and then they'll deal with the situation after the season. And Mohamed say five goals on the year and two assists. Petey's so dangerous when the ball is in wide areas, a big body on set pieces. He can give this Clemson attack a, a little different look than what they have. Very similar to Bear Golson, really. Say who takes the feed, 6-3. Johnson crossing pass, but easy enough for Hoffelner. I think actually Quinn McNeil was trying to nod that down for Fernandez Salvador. That ball's coming in shape like that and spinning tough to control. On the attack, fighting Evans. Boy, it looked like he'd set up grinding right there. Grinding went down, no whistle. Diop, he hits the turf. Yeah, that looked like a handball right wow. there too. Wow, lines are some really nice moves. Say. Rodriguez did a very nice job playing the ball and able to 
set it up for his teammate Wheeler. Johnson for the Tigers. Yeah, Fernandez Salvador just picked the pocket there of Rouse. Not a bad idea trying to feed to Johnson. I think those are the moments there where Clemson really needs someone like Usman Silla on the ball in that area. He can unlock that Kentucky back line. Wheeler denied. Denied again with a lefty kick. Looks like Chafamba's down. He turned awkwardly. Elton Chafamba out of Black Lick, Ohio, the Clemson freshman. Sliding in, trying to defend against Cameron Wheeler, a grad transfer from Louisville for this Kentucky program. So Wheeler moving from one side of the Bluegrass State rival to the other. Chafamba. like he's able to continue. Lindau was trying to get positioning. Brandon Parrish. Wasn't able to do anything when the ball got to him. The screen will kick it ahead. Lindau and Evans offside. And Lindau trying to play Evans in. Just looked like Akron just stepped at the last second there to put him in an offside position. Like an opportunity was building for the Wildcats. So nicely done by Agron. The awareness of knowing just half a step, he's going to be in an offside position. First time tonight, Wildcats are whistled for the offside. Oscar Agron of the Tigers closing in. What would be another Elite Eight berth for the Tigers, trying to get to an Elite Eight in the NCAA tourney for the 16th time. As we're under 20 minutes to play in regulation. Will Callum Johnson's first half goal hold up? Navarro Gomez returns to action. Pass was intended for Say. near the ball for Clemson but right there for Hoffelner. Yeah that actually looks like it was going to kind of shape and stay out of the penalty area but Hoffelner was able to corral that in. Screen. Center of the pass for Wheeler. And a foul against Kentucky. job around the ball by Elton Chafamba. Looks like he's shaken off that injury from moments ago. I think he could have gone either way with that call. Looked like there was a, a lot of tussling from both players. Hey, 
Johnson. Asensio. Fernandez. Oof. I tell you, if he's offside, Pete, it's by the smallest of margins. That was very close. Show you how close. Good decision by the assistant referee. And screen unable to get in the way of a pass across field to him. It just went out as he extended his right leg. Oliver Yule just checked in for the Wildcats. First time we've seen him tonight. And Trey Asensio on the field now for Kentucky, but no relation to Clemson's Charlie Asensio, at least as far as we could tell. On the attack, grinding. That's a good tackle. Foot to the ground off the tackle. Oscar Agra in there, but the Wildcats now with an opportunity with another corner kick. It'll be their fifth of the night. Agra just doing a good job of providing cover here. Cameron Wheeler. Look at the number of bodies surrounding George Marks. Going to be an in swinger here. from the crowd is Marks. And even job of the Tiger a lot goal. easier than it was. Oh, that's got to be a yellow. And get ready for the crowd to. That's really surprising it's not a yellow because in that moment it's a counterattacking opportunity. He's been beaten one on one. There's clearly a foul. Mason Visconti, the former Clemson player, who's been hearing it from the student section there to the right of your screen, and he would have heard it a whole lot more. Look at this. Now, you can see the, the initial contact as it was Silla hitting the deck. And these are the moments that Clemson wants to be wary of. When they commit players for, they can't allow that six, that eight, those holding midfielders to get too far forward and leave them exposed on the counter. Meinzer. Now you've got Gomez in there. I think Gomez is Clemson's best holding midfield player. You've got El Shafan, but they both have to be committed to doing the dirty work. It'll be a throw in. Kentucky throwing everyone forward here on this throw in. Yeah. A throw in with some corner kick principles to it. Yule from Denmark. Heaves it. Header. And kicked away. I believe that was Ogren who was able to get it upfield. And Clemson connects L. George Marks was just a face in the crowd as the corner kick came. Well, first of all, Pete, I love the Tom Petty reference. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's more difficult than it is, than it seems there. He's coming out in traffic, trying to take that cross at his highest point. Attacking the ball, looked like a wide receiver that time, going up and trying to high point a ball. Well, we got Asensio on the grab. I believe that was Asensio and not Gomez. Strong kick. Luca Rodriguez. Substitution for the Wildcats. Entering the match number 19, Luke Andrews, and number 21, Nick Goodman. Luke Andrews and Nick Goodman. Back on the field, forward and midfielder respectively. And 
Wildcats obviously needing to get players with more offensive mind out there. I don't know that Bjorgelson has returned though to the field. Yeah, and you can see they've changed their system. They've almost morphed into a into a back three at moments, coming a lot of players forward. Look at how forward Grosso is. Almost playing with four forwards now, just searching for that equalizer. Out to get the kick away, and now Yule unable to get it ahead to his teammate Goodman. Amadi Diop for Clemson. And Johnson turned the wrong way. Goodman on the attack for Kentucky. Clemson's going to have to get some sustained possession here and Pete get the ball in wide areas. If you're going to play it in behind that Clemson back or that Kentucky back line, get the ball in wide areas. Contact down low. Grasso top of the box centering Yule. Still a nice job. Say though, unable to do much with it. You need pressure on this ball. Luke Andrews hitting the deck. Actually, that time it was Bailey Rouse. Sensio for Kentucky. Oh, nice feed. Gutmann with the op closing in a hurry. Yule. And who dangerous play. Nervous moments there. And the body language by Justin Malou. I think tells it all. For a second, it's almost as if George Marks' goalkeeper froze and is thinking, what are you doing? Yeah, he can't. He has to make a play on that because he's got, looked like Grinning was coming in at the back post. You can see he pulled out of it. Corner for Kentucky. Looks like Agron there. Yep, Agron able to boot it away at 6-3. He's a physical presence, obviously, for Clemson. And obviously, Yule coming in will be another long throw they'll have to contend against. Yule, one of the many from a Scandinavian nation on this Kentucky team. Kicked by Meinzer, but Grasso unable to contain it. So less than 15 minutes in is when we got the lone tally of this match. There was a foul and it allowed the Tigers to restart. And what a nice setup for Callum Johnson. Yeah, first touch preparing the ball here. Just the slightest of deflections. Throws Hoffman or off. And that's how we got here, Pete. Usman Silla, Oscar Agrin assisting the third goal of the season for the Boston College transfer, Callum Johnson out of New York City. He wants to see this 2021 season continue for his Clemson team. And I think that's a good tactical substitution from Mike Noonan there, pulling on Isaiah Reed for Muhammad Say. This game was just not for Say what he does. But it's opened up to the extent if they can get Reed in behind with his pace, he can cause some trouble. This is going to be a counterattacking opportunity here. Callum Johnson battling. Silla unable to do anything with it for Clemson. And that's well beyond the opportunity for Gutmann to catch up to it for Kentucky. Second all-time meeting, both times in NCAA tourney play. A three overtime, one nothing Clemson win back in November of 2001 in the first meeting. So Bjorgelson among their top offensive threats. Back on the field as the stretch run has arrived for the Wildcats. 
And Clemson will use all of these stoppages to milk all of the time off the clock that they can. Diop falling down off the kick. Yule. Play advantage there. Able to get it ahead to his teammate grinding. Now Bjorgelson. And job number one deny the cross. Oh, 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 oh. Malou right there defending and denying that, as you said, the crossing pass. Oh, well, he's going to come back and he's going to issue Guzman Silva a booking. That's why he stopped the clock. Just off the video view there. He allowed advantage to play on it. Corner kick coming for Casper Grinding. Deflected in the box. So who's Mancilla, as you said, and a header and a goal. There's the equalizer. And coming through from the back, Luca Rodriguez, fifth goal of the year. The transfer from Oral Roberts. He's been a big addition for the Wildcats, and he comes through with a tying goal with just over five minutes to play in regulation. Clemson just not able to get the ball cleared quickly enough. It began with the corner kick by Casper Grinding. Yeah, it's just the second phase as Clemson is pushing out of here. Assisted by number 21, Nick Goodman. George Marks allows his 17th goal in 20 matches this season. He's able to find the space in between Diop and Agron. One of the first year transfers for Johan Sedergren's team. Luca Rodriguez, the head coach, talked particularly about what an important addition he has been, both in the back, but also in moments like that. So 1-1. The kind of tight match we anticipated coming in. And now the infraction against the Wildcats. A yeah, big moment here. Going to be a restart. Take another look. That's clearly a push in the back. And Fernandez Salvador. And while we're looking at the replay, Johan Sedergren, a yellow card against the Kentucky team is issued. And now he's speaking his piece. He appears to be disputing something that happened before. To me, it's a clear foul on, on this one case. Third yellow card on the night against the Wildcats. So an opportunity for the Tigers. Pipe Fernandez Salvador. From the perspective of Hoffner, the goalkeeper, off to his right. Opportunity for the Tigers out front, I believe Malou, but unable to capitalize. Wildcats back on the attack. Mason Visconti centering pass. Diop now grinding. I told you he's an emerging player in their program, and the fact that he's out there at this stage of the game, a freshman from Denmark, important for them. Mark is able to reach down and stop that from causing any damage and a little bit of disbelief expressed by Luke Andrews that there was no foul call. Yeah, he's looking for a penalty there, isn't he? Foul and the foul against Clemson. Our 
So Meinzer standing over the ball. Justin Malou on that last foul. Kentucky 14 fouls in the match. That was the eighth against the Tigers. Meinzer, the native of Germany, strong kick. Right of the goal, but Marks able to deny the header. And slow to get up, Bailey Rouse, the senior out of Littleton, Colorado. Yeah, it looked like Diop just undercut him there, didn't it? Little flick onto the back post. I think Diop's fortunate he isn't. I thought just Diop was made, but it looked like he was just trying to play the ball, but I mean, that's the kind of contact. And now, help to his feet is Rouse. Another one of their team captains. They really relied on the leadership of Meinzer, a senior, and Rouse. Mark saw Kentucky tie it on the header by Rodriguez just moments ago for his fifth goal of the year. Fourth player for Kentucky with five goals on the season. Rodriguez, who transferred from Oral Roberts for this season. Trying to run it down. Andrews, some contact. Play continues. Here comes a foul. Quick on the counter. And Silla was expecting a whistle. Comedy Diop. Yeah, Pete, credit to Kentucky. They they put Luis Grosso up front looking for the equalizer, and he's been so dangerous they've elected him to keep him there. You just saw his leaping ability. Well give and go try, but defended nicely by the Tigers. Play stop momentarily, I believe. Ogren might have taken a kick. No, oh, I think he sees a, a little bit of blood on. And then also Asensio and Asensio with some blood, but back near the goal area, it looked like Ogren was trying to shake off a little bit of contact. And now he's, you see, walking toward midfield. While things get. Cleared up with Asensio. Senior out of Roswell, Georgia. Asensio, much to surprise, has to wait on the sidelines. Traffic, Meinzer. Gutmann getting it ahead. All sides against Kentucky. Asensio checks back in for Clemson. Coming up on a minute to go in regulation. In front of the net, an opportunity, oh and a goal! Alvaro Gomez with what is surely the winner, Pete. Justin Malou getting it to his teammate Alvaro Gomez. Third goal of the season for the junior from Spain. He really just picked him out nicely, and what a sublime touch from Gomez. And the composure with the finish just puts it right into the goalkeeper. What a first touch. Oh, he actually just dinked it over him, didn't he? 
comes out, makes himself big. Gomez with the deft touch to put it away. First time this season, the Kentucky Wildcats have allowed more than one goal by the opposition. Their fine goalkeeper, Jan Hoffelner, came in having given up six in 17 matches. He gives up two in match number 18. Huge moment for the Tiger Junior, Alvaro Gomez. And well, you can see the anguish in the face of Johan Sedergren, the head coach of the Wildcats. Kentucky with not a lot of time to try to answer. Under a minute to play in regulation. Fernandez will let it go. And you notice he kicked it away to try to make it more difficult for order to be restored. So the clock stops, 51 seconds to go. And you just know the referee is going to stop the clock on any situation like that. Another throw in by Yule. Well, it would only be fitting that you would have to defend a few of these here down the stretch after getting that go-ahead goal. Another throw in. Very strong. I think that's a goal kick. Oh, it's going to be a corner. And it's going to be a corner kick. All hands on deck for Clemson here. And I th you can see everyone coming forward. Seventh of the Even night, off, we will see off Elner's in there as well. Yule from the corner in front of the goal. Headed away. And I think that's going to do it. You just got to pump that forward. Closing 10 seconds. And the Clemson Tigers will protect the home field. Even the goalkeeper, Hoffelner, try to get into the act. But the Tigers survive at home against the Kentucky Wildcats. And it's on to the Elite Eight for the 16th time in program history. Well, Pete, I thought Kentucky was sensational on the night and the spirit they showed and clawed their way back into getting the equalizing goal with under 10 minutes to play. But Clemson just resilient in the end. Callum Johnson got the scoring going inside of the first 15 minutes. And it was Alvaro Gomez who snapped a one-all tie in the closing minutes of half number two. Tigers improved to 15 and 5 on the season. The Wildcats campaign comes to an end with just their second loss. Kentucky 15 2 and 4 to close it out in the fall of 2021. Well, that's a tough way to go out losing in the last minute to play there, but after the win over Denver in the second round of the tournament, Coach Newman reflected on the fight he felt his team had. The teams combined for 22 fouls and five yellow cards. So it was a physical match at times. It was chippy. The scoring began in the opening half. A little over 13 minutes in, Callum Johnson coming through with his third goal of the season after a foul. Wildcats responding. Yeah, the second phase of this corner just finds himself between the center backs, buries the header. Luca Rodriguez picking up his fifth goal of the season. But then, in the closing minutes, Alvaro Gomez set up by Justin Malou. Yeah, his first touch there from Gomez outside of the boot. Not only controls the ball, it puts it beyond the two defenders. And just a little dink over the keeper's outstretched legs. Less than a minute 10 to go when the winning goal was delivered by Gomez. There's Callum Johnson, the Boston College transfer, who sees his season and the Tigers extended. So Clemson moves on to the Elite Eight, the quarterfinal round, getting ready to find out who wins on the other side of the bracket. They're just underway out in Corvallis, Oregon, the number one seed, Oregon State Beavers taking on the number 16 seed New Hampshire Wildcats. We expected a tight match, Kevin. That's what we got tonight. Oh, absolutely. I, I thought it was a, a terrific befitting of a Sweet 16 game here, and I think everyone here in Tiger Town will be rooting for New Hampshire tonight because that would mean they'd host an Elite Eight game on the weekend.
Tigers do know they're moving on to the Elite Eight with another win on the season to give them 15. They'll find out within the next couple of hours who they play and where next weekend. Our final tonight, Clemson 2, Kentucky 1. For Kevin Kennedy and our fine crew, Pete Kennedy saying so long. This has been a presentation of ESPN.